Hi everyone and welcome to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Candace McElia. We've all experienced dry, itchy, uncomfortable eyes. Did you know that dry eye syndrome is treatable using a number of methods and there are groundbreaking and new therapeutic options to help avoid dry eyes and even improve your vision. Dr. Brian Foster of the Eye Associates is here to answer your dry eye questions live and we'll be going to the phones in just a moment. Dr. Foster is a board certified ophthalmologist as well as a fellowship trained corneal surgeon and a bladeless laser cataract surgeon. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much. It's Welcome to be back. back. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. So we're talking today about dry eyes and dry eye syndrome. So let's yep. just start with the basics. What yep. is dry eye syndrome? So a syndrome is basically a collection of a few different diseases. And so, and it, it sounds like it's like what it is, it's the surface of the eye is too dry mm -hmm. and there's different components. There's a problem with the uh, tears uh, being produced. There's also a problem with increased evaporation. And so the way I explain to my patients is basically you have a, a sink, you have a drain and a faucet. Sometimes the drain isn't on as much as it should and sometimes the faucet is uh, releases too much fluid. Mm -hmm. And um, when you have a, the surface of the eye that's dry, uh, you actually can get decreased vision, fluctuating vision, uh, discomfort, right. burning. Uh, a lot of my patients describe uh, sand or grit or foreign body type sensation in the eye. Um, eye fatigue, especially at the end of the day. A lot of people, um, you know, with dry eye feel like they just want to close their eyes and keep them closed for a few minutes. So it's, mm. it's not a typically a vision threatening disease, but it can be very um, uncomfortable and very uh, annoying. Yeah. Now, what types of things cause dry eye? Do we know? Mm -hmm. uh, quite a few. Uh, quite a few very common things. Of course, it's age related. So the number one cause is actually birthday candles. Is what I tell my patients. <laughs> oh, it's, no. it's just unfortunate <laughs> that you know it happens to everyone that we get older. But uh, that's the number one cause. Uh, believe it or not, a lot of actually uh, middle aged women. It's a pretty common. Uh, pretty common disease in that age group and that gender and th there's uh, some hormone uh, hormone uh, related uh, causes there. Okay. Um, other things uh, are environment. Um, some of my patients uh, have uh, breathing machines at, at night and mm -hmm. so that can cause uh, some you know dryness, a lot of air travel, a lot of um, uh, different environments like you know living in Arizona or different parts of, of the climate with really low humidity can also contribute. Hmm, now you mentioned air travel and we were talking about that a little bit before the show. Mm -hmm. That's kind yeah. of interesting so if you fly a lot right mm -hmm. that can, can contribute to dry eyes. Tell me about that. Yeah. So uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that the actual airplane uh, cabin is uh, has an extremely low humidity, about five to ten percent. Mm. Uh, and what that does, you can imagine that over the course of a few hours in the airplane, uh, with the humidity that low, your eyes just continue to get dry. And the more you fly, the more you're exposed to that environment, and the more dry your eyes get. So. Uh, the solution is really to be proactive and treat it, uh, and then you know any any of my patients that are going to be traveling, I'd give them uh, recommendations, more frequent tears, some other things that we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's always the option of first class, where they give you the nice hot you know towel. My doctor said <laughs> yeah. I must fly yeah. first class. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Can you get a note for that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I write those notes all the time. Right. No. Um, but that's, you know, different things that you can do to, to help prevent it. Okay. Well, we're going to talk uh, in a minute about all of the really cool things that you can use to treat dry yeah. eyes. But first, I want to remind everybody that our phone lines are open. And if you have a question for Dr. Foster about any eye-related issue, we are talking about dry eyes here tonight. But we welcome any of your calls. Give us a call at 361-4675. And our phone lines are now open. So before we talk about ways to treat it, um, tell us a little bit about what are the symptoms? What can people, besides that itchy feeling, yeah. there's some other symptoms that people can look for, right? Yep, yeah. uh, so a couple really common symptoms. One is actually fluctuating vision. Uh, one of the problems with dry is that the tear film, which is a thin layer of fluid on the surface of the cornea, that uh, tear film is actually designed to keep very crisp vision and very sharp vision. And when that tear film evaporates, it, the vision can blur out very quickly. Uh, and so a lot of my patients will describe if they're sitting down to read a book or sitting down to watch TV, 
uh, they'll actually notice that the vision just does not stay as sharp like it should. It, it comes and goes. So that's a very common symptom of, of dry, dry eye. Okay. Yep. I think we have a caller on the line with a question for Dr. Foster. Hi, Pat. Welcome to the show. You're live on the air with Dr. Foster. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is this. I, um, I've never had a problem with my eyes. Uh, we moved from, from Ohio in 2009. And um, when I was checked down here last year uh, for a scratch on my eye, I actually was going to get contact lenses. And he said, oh, no, you've got uh, farsightedness, and, you've, and it's changed the angle of your eye, which makes um, a pressure change, which might cause narrow angle glaucoma down the road. Sure. You know, so, so he wants to do... Um, a laser iridotomy to um, make that so it won't happen. Okay. However, I listened to Dr. McCabe last week and she said when you have a laser surgery on your eye, you will end up with a cataract. So, in talking to doctors, yeah. you know, they say, well, we always fix a cataract, but how important is this to have it done? I mean, last year they acted like they would not, they told me they wouldn't check me for, um, you know, contact lenses until I had this done. Sure. And, uh, good question, so. good question. And uh, definitely Dr. McCabe is, is right. A lot of different lasers that we do, for instance, LASIK in particular, can, pre uh, can contribute to dryness in the short term. Uh, fortunately, most folks after a laser like that do not have long-term issues, but it can be uh, an issue that, that we need to address in the short term. The good news about, about you, the laser that we're talking about in you is actually I'm not aware of any significant association with cataract. So I do uh, these lasers to prevent angle closure glaucoma all the time. It's a very routine laser. If, and if your doctor recommended it, that's something that I, I, I definitely would recommend. I, I don't think that should cause other issues like, like dryness or cataract or anything like that uh, for you. Great question. Thank you so much. We appreciate the call. So back to dry eyes. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about um, how serious can it be? If you don't get dry eyes treated, could you have a loss of vision? Uh, it, it's possible, and I do have I do treat a wide range of patients. There, unfortunately, there are some patients with have that have very severe dry, and that can actually be difficult to treat. Um, scarring on the cornea can develop, and scarring can lead to vision loss. Hmm. Uh, but the the good news is the vast majority of folks, even with symptoms, don't have typically significant loss of vision. But they do have some of those more functional symptoms like fluctuating vision and just eye fatigue, and some of these symptoms that are really annoying but um, should be looked at and should be treated even though there's not a risk of severe vision loss. And I know you've said before, but really not a good idea to rub on your eyes if you have dry eye syndrome, right? Right. Uh, eye rubbing in general, uh, the party line is don't rub your eyes ever. <laughs> but <Okay. laughs> in general, uh, you know, if you have allergies, it can make allergies worse. If you have dry eye, you're really, you're really not addressing the underlying problem. Okay. So. All right, great. Well, we'll have much more great information with Dr. Brian Foster of the Eye Associates in just a minute, plus lots of great new treatment information to share with you. So don't go away. We'll be right back after this quick break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Candace McAlia, and I'm joined tonight by Dr. Brian Foster of the Eye Associates. We're talking about dry eyes and dry eye syndrome, and we have a lot of great new treatment information to share with you in just a minute, but we do have a caller on the line, so we're gonna take that call first. Hi, Cindy, welcome to the show. You're on live with Dr. Foster. Uh, hi, I would like to ask um, if you have a wrinkle in your retina, does this prevent you from having cataract surgery, especially with an implant of the new lens? Great question, uh, Cindy. A, a wrinkle in the retina is a condition, the official name for it is called an epiretinal membrane. And what that is, it's actually a very thin cellophane layer on the surface of the retina and it can actually tug on the retina and can cause a wrinkle. Um, that can affect vision. 
Uh, I do cataract surgery on patients with epiretinal membranes all the time, and as long as you uh, recognize that there's an issue there and, and treat it appropriately, patients do very well. Um, it does increase risk for retinal swelling after cataract surgery, so often we will do an additional a uh, few weeks of eye drops to try to prevent any issues with cataract surgery, but if a cataract is becoming visually significant, uh, it's definitely something that uh, can be very safely addressed uh, in addition to uh, the epiretinal membrane. That's good news. Yep. And we have more good news, so let's talk a little bit about some of the new treatments that are out there for dry sure, eyes. Definitely. We have brought a little show and tell yes. uh, here today. <laughs> and the dry eye, because there's so many different causes uh, for dry eye, uh, there's generally a multifactorial, a kind of a multi pronged approach in treating it. And that's where the doctor comes in. You don't, you know, just if you're having issues, I recommend not just going and, and taking an eye drop and just assuming everything's fine. Usually it's, it's wise to get a evaluation and there's some different um, testing that we can do to, um, to uh, evaluate it. Another interesting th uh, condition that simulates dry eye is a condition called uh, conjunctivocalasis. And that's what we're looking at here. And this animation shows uh, conjunctivocalasis. And okay. what it is, is, is it's a condition that affects the surface, the white part of the eye, called the conjunctiva. Mm. And you can see here, that conjunctiva actually becomes um, baggy and loose. And this loose tissue actually pushes tears out of the eye, and the tears are not really allowed to, um, to coat the surface well and, and prevent uh, discomfort. Mm. So, so that actually uh, pushes tears out. It's basically uh, excess tissue that should not be there, huh. and it can really uh, cause significant discomfort. The symptoms are very similar to dry eye, and it's a condition that is often under underdiagnosed and not treated. Uh, and a lot of my patients will come to me, and they've been on frequent drops and other dry eye treatments, and they uh, still have significant symptoms despite that treatment. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's actually uh, nice when, when you determine that this is a cause because it's, it's actually uh, pretty easy to correct uh, with surgery. Mm -hmm. And the way we correct it, you can see here, uh, we actually remove uh, some of that excess tissue on the surface of the eye. The procedure is outpatient. It's a very quick, uh, basically 15 minute procedure. Wow. Uh, we replace that, um, that defect with a very thin layer of amniotic membrane, which is actually placenta tissue. Hmm. And it's a really great replacement because it has some anti-scarring, anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, that graft actually uh, is secured with glue. Uh, the graft is secured without any stitches. And so you have a very quick recovery, uh, generally painless recovery. You're on eye drops afterward to help the healing process, but as that uh, loose tissue is gone, the symptoms improve significantly. That's so amazing. It's a nice treatment. It's a it's a condition that a lot of a lot of eye doctors miss, and it's very underdiagnosed. It's something that that uh, that can be uh, can be corrected. Great news. So. Wonderful. Definitely. Well, we're going to take another uh, call. We've got Greg on the line. Hi, Greg. Welcome to the show. You're on with Dr. Foster. Hello. Hi. Yes, sir. I have a question. I um, I have a, a tendency to I be watching TV or something, and my eyes will start tearing up, and they will continue watering until I mean, I'll, I know it's the wrong thing to rub them, try to dry them out, and everything, <laughs> but they just continue watering. And sure. What is that? It's just yeah, so that actually is a very common symptom of dry eye. Uh, you know, it sounds funny that your eyes are tearing a lot. You know, how can my eyes be dry? But what happens is the surface of the cornea is actually dry and the, the lacrimal gland is pumping out tears to try to compensate for that. Those tears are not sticking to the eye real well. And so they're running off kind of like water off a duck's back. The, the tears just run off the eye. And so you have what we call it is uh, reflex tearing. Uh, so that's a very common uh, symptom of dry eye. Uh, my patients with this symptom um, come to me and we, we do the, the uh, dry eye uh, workup to determine what type of dryness it is and there's a lot of different treatments that we can use to correct it. Um, that's something we can, uh, I guess, go into a little bit. Sure. Um, 
So one of the uh, mainstays of treatment, in addition to uh, artificial tears, which is really the number one mainstay of first-line treatment, uh, this is a particular brand that I like. Um, there's preserved tears and preservative-free tears. Uh, the difference is preservative-free tears, you can't take them too much. So if you have severe dry eye and you want to use these tears every hour, you can do that safely. The, the way to know the difference between the two is that the preservative free tears actually come in little vials hmm. which are smaller than a normal size eye bottle. They're little t typically twist caps and you can use those uh, tears in the little vials. So that's one little trick. Another uh, treatment that is actually very commonly prescribed is fish oil and currant seed oil. They're different uh, oils that actually help uh, conditions such as dry eye and blepharitis. Uh, and the one, uh, one brand of uh, fish oil that I like is called Omega Cure. And this is actually great for patients that uh, have difficulty swallowing pills, or if you're on a lot of pills already and you really do not want to add any more pills, this is a really nice, um, uh, nice supplement. It actually tastes great. It ha has no fishy taste, and you can add that to your drink or your food. Uh, and it, it, it's a nice way to improve your dryness. How much do you um, take of that? Is it just a little? Uh, it's actually just a couple of tablespoons a day. Okay. It's, it's, not, it's not much. Okay. There's also um, some supplements that we uh, have at the office that have current seed oil as well, which is another great supplement that works uh, in combination with, with fish oil. Hmm. So that, that supplement's called Hydro Eye. Okay. Um, so, I mentioned briefly a condition called blepharitis, um, and, and that is another very common uh, condition. And the treatment for blepharitis is uh, several fold. One mainstay of treatment is actually uh, hot compresses. And here's uh, a, a very nice um, mask that I recommend to a lot of my patients. Uh, this mask is something that you stick in the microwave for about 20 seconds. Uh, the mask has uh, hydrating beads that actually release moist heat after the microwave treatment. And I have my patients do this for about three to five minutes every day. And what that does is it actually releases, um, it liquefies and releases some of the oil in the glands and the surface of the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be really helpful in, in keeping the tears uh, from evaporating and helping dry eye and helping blepharitis. So you just kind of so, put this on, relax. And you do. It's a nice, yeah, it's nice. almost like a mini spa treatment. Right. It really, it's really <laughs> relaxing. It works really well. That's great. So, Okay, well that's uh, good news that we have so many options yeah. that were not necessarily available to people before, maybe we yeah. didn't know about right. before. Right, definitely. Very good. Well, we do have another caller on the line. Hi, Conrad. Welcome to the show. You're live on the air with Dr. Foster. Hi. Hi. I was wondering if dry eyes caused the blood vessel to burst. I seem to, every couple of months I have a blood vessel in my eye that burst. Okay. I do have blepharitis. Do you? Okay. Um, interestingly, a lot of times we never can know for sure what causes these the burst blood vessels, but the uh, any inflammation on the surface of the eye, which could be from dry eye syndrome, could be from blepharitis, can cause irritated blood vessels. And an irritated blood vessel uh, does is more likely uh, to rupture and so I think that that likely is contributing either the blepharitis or possibly some dry eye on top of it uh, is likely contributing. Um, often um, often there's not a lot of great treatments you just have to kind of wait for the uh, the hemorrhage to go away um, but it is something that if we're maximizing our dry eye treatment and our blepharitis treatment hopefully that that will become less frequent for you and if you, if you want to come uh, for an evaluation, I'd be happy to take a look and see if we can figure out, you know, what could be causing these frequent uh, ruptures, because I know that that's got to be disrupting for you, <laughs> definitely. Thank you so much for your question. We appreciate it. And our phone lines are still open. So if you have a question for Dr. Foster, give us a call at 361-4675. And we have much more to come after this quick break. Hi everyone, welcome back to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Candace Magalia here with Dr. Brian Foster of the Eye Associates tonight. And we're talking about dry eyes and dry eye syndrome and we're taking your calls live. And uh, before we go any further, we do have a caller on the line. So we're gonna take that call first. Hi there, you're on the air with Dr. Foster. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you. 
Go right ahead with your question. Uh, my question is, each morning I wake up, my eyes are very painful, so I keep them closed for maybe 60 seconds, and then I can open them without pain. Um, years ago, a little kid stuck me in my eye, and I had to wear a patch. And anyways, I was treated and used to always have eye drops. But if I keep the fan on all night, my mm -hmm. eye may wake up it with a problem. So sure. this was like maybe three, four years ago when I was treated for it. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. if there's never a cure. Uh, if I don't treat it with eye drops, am I going to run into a problem? Very good. Well, this is a very common situation a lot of people deal with, and that's the fact that we do live in Florida. Uh, a lot of people love sleeping under a fan. I'm no exception. Uh, and what, what happens is throughout the course of the night, even if your eyelids are mostly closed, you can have a progressive dryness developing while you're sleeping. Mm. And so it sounds like that's what's happening with you. And, and um, this is something that you can treat it. And, and basically, I do recommend bring, being proactive uh, because if you if you leave a pretty significant dryness, it can actually predispose you to other problems like erosions of the cornea and some other things that you really don't want to get into. Uh, and so, you know, the bottom line is is you can come see me. We can do the full uh, workup and evaluation and, and give you some recommendations. An easy, quick recommendation is lubricating ointment. There's some different good ointments like Gentile, Refresh, Sustain. Uh, different ointments you can do before bed, which stay on the eye all night. Um, the other thing is just simply turning the fan off, moving the air vents away, you know, s sleeping with less, you know, covers and just, you know, staying cool that way. But that's an another thing that you can do to help. I have since we've been doing this show. I've stopped sleeping with the fan on <laughs> because yeah. that's really, you know, important, I think, yeah. and everybody um, that actually all the doctors have brought that up. So. Yeah. It's you know better for your eye health, and yeah. we actually um, in just a minute, Dr. Foster is going to tell us about a new test for dry eye syndrome, which is sure. pretty neat. But we do have another caller on the line, and we want to take that call. Hi, Sue. Welcome to the show. You're on the air with Dr. Foster. Oh, I was going to ask him if uh, Sudafed, which kind of dries your nose out, I take the non-drowsy about 60 milligrams a day. Uh, wouldn't that dry the eye out also? Unfortunately, yes, as mm. Sudafed is a big offender. Uh, any of the decongestants can dry out the mucosa the, in the nose and the eyes. Uh, another thing that a lot of people don't realize is antihistamines. Um, even the non-drowsy antihistamines can, be, uh, can contribute to significant dryness. Um, so those are all things that, that you want to watch out for. Not to say you can't use them, but you also want to just give yourself supplemental tears and make sure you're, you're treating the dryness in addition to allergies and, uh, you know, nasal, nasal symptoms. Mm. So. so tell me about the new yeah. test that's available for dry eyes. Yeah, so we, one of the uh, things that, that I really like about our practice is that we have a lot of uh, great diagnostic technology that's, that's very new. Uh, this uh, test is called the Tear Lab. And what it is, is it's actually a, a basically a chemistry lab uh, in, in a mic, on a micro scale. Mm. And what this test does, it actually measures the concentration of your tears. And that helps, uh, that helps me determine what type of dry eye you have and how best to treat it. Wow. And this, this little uh, probe actually just goes right in the corner of your eye. And it takes a tiny little micro uh, sample of your own tears. And uh, with that sample, it gives me a number of the concentration of the tears, uh, and that, that can be really useful in the clinic. Uh, and so oh, that's neat. It's, a, it's a nice technology, and th this is going to uh, become even more useful uh, in other applications. Or just as an aside, they're actually using this technology now to do some very rapid blood tests, like in, in the military for you know, soldiers on the battlefield and a lot of different applications that will be coming available. That's, so that's very great. interesting. It looks just yeah. like a little thermometer yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, really, really small. So yeah. I understand that the Eye Associates is also an accredited dry eye center. What does yeah. that mean exactly? Uh, we're, we're accredited uh, dry eye center, which basically means we have all of these uh, technologies available to us. So uh, it's, not, it's not something that we take lightly. It's a very common disease, and it can be very frustrating for our patients. So we, we try to provide the best um, diagnostic uh, uh, diagnostic abilities available and also the different uh, therapies like the conjunctiva treatment and uh, all these different 
uh, different strategies. And I guess probably the best strategy for a patient is, you know, when we go every every six months, we go to the dentist. People don't yeah. think to just kind of go regularly to get their eyes yeah. checked and make sure that everything's okay, especially if yeah. they're having an issue. Yeah, and that's the main thing is, is if you have significant dryness, usually you have some symptoms, you know something is going on, whether a vision problem or a comfort problem. Mm -hmm. So any of those um, things that you're noticing, I do recommend checking in with us and we can, we can take a, a look and see what we need to do. Great, and now any clinical studies going on for dry eyes? We always uh, have clinical studies uh, rotating through. At, at this very moment, um, we don't have a, a specific dry eye study, but we always have different studies. There's actually a blepharitis study uh, that, that we're gonna be involved with here, and, um, but there, there are a lot of dry studies that, that we have. Great. Um, well, unbelievably, we're basically at the end of the show. So much great information. Thank you so much for sharing all sure, of that. Definitely. And of course, if you didn't get your question answered or if you have um, more questions, you can always give the Eye Associates a call at their 800 number or check them out at, online at siteforlife.com. And the number is right there on your screen. It's one 866 865 2020. And if you miss any part of tonight's show, it will re air on Sunday at 10 30 a.m. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Thank Foster. You. And from all of us here at SNN, have a great night.